And good evening, San Francisco. Welcome to the program. My name is Stephen Leader, your host. I am delighted to have with me Jeremy Novi, street artist. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. You are creating an, ex uh, an exhibition, uh, South of Market at SoMarts. Could you tell us a little bit more about that, please? Um, I've uh, curated uh, the world's first uh, group queer street art exhibit. Um, it is called A History of Queer Street Art. Um, it has 30 artists from around the world, uh, some of the artists of which um, were active in the 80s and have since passed away, but um, shows a lineage of queer street art and its activist roots um, up to current day artists uh, doing um, all sorts of different street art around the world. Okay, I've actually got some video I want to uh, show uh, of the uh, SOMARTS uh, Local, it gives it like an overall impression of it. So while you're doing, while I'm actually uh, queuing it up, tell us uh, where, where uh, about they could find it and how long does the ex exhibition run to, run for? Right now, you can find the exhibit at the Soma Arts Center in San Francisco, uh, running up until the 25th. Um, after um, San Francisco, the show will be going to LA, um, then on to New York and London, along with uh, other places that um, street artists that are in the show uh, are from. Um, I'm hoping that it can go to all the locations, um, uh, Melbourne, Australia, um, Dublin, Ireland, uh, Mexico City. There's, there's several artists in the show from all over, um, and, and it's a great thing um, being that there's never been a group of queer street art exhibit in, in history. Okay, we're actually seeing the inside, oops, we're actually seeing the inside of the, uh, exhibition now uh it's actually quite a small exhibition isn't it smaller than uh one would expect um, i wanted the space to be a little bit smaller than a larger one um so that i could like piece it all together very like um up to one another it, it, it's intention is to be on the street and um not exactly on a white wall um with tons of white space around it yeah, I was actually going to... Uh, now, you've actually got a wall that is international. We're looking at the international wall actually, now. Actually, the wall that we're looking at is like um, the, the state national. side. Okay. Uh, and this is the international oh, wall okay. right here. Okay. Um, we have Dublin, um, Germany, London, Vancouver, Mexico City, uh, Portugal. Uh, let me go on to like New York. Uh, I don't know. This, yeah, and LA. now we're getting to the national yeah, the, side. Yeah, yeah, New York, LA, um, Atlanta, San Francisco artists. And, the, and there in the corner, in the back there, right, uh, is it's your work. Oh, right? yeah, that's a stencil of Hecalina, the life-size one. Um, she actually founded uh, Tranny Shack. Then we have um, a Divine stencil and uh, my Andy Warhol um, beef noodle soup can from a very recent um, big exhibit here in San Francisco. Uh, they chose 30, 31 artists to uh, represent uh, one of Andy Warhol's soup cans in their lowbrow art style. Uh, I was chosen to do the stencil version of it. I, I see. And now there's actually one piece that really hit me when we first walked in, which was a picture. And I brought my copy of it with me here. And I hope you'll actually explain a little bit more about this because I love this piece. And would you hold the other side of it? And we'll probably have it backwards. Mine's a rather a much worse condition than uh, yours, but uh, there we go. Well, mine's going to be archived, and so right. uh, it's a this is, For those people who can't see it, this is an amazing picture of a cloudy sky with a bird up there. And it was one of about five or six of uh, posters that uh, I found. Tell me the story of the poster. And um, the, and artist, the artist is uh, Felix um, Gonzalez Torres, and uh, he, he's an artist um, who... Uh, Worked in, in New York. Uh, he was born in 1957 and passed away in 1996. Um, he, he was doing a lot of art that was talking about AIDS and the epidemic of AIDS affecting uh, queer society at, at its time. Um, his, his art pieces, all of them, are uh, continuous works of art. Um, it was, may have been created um, in like 1991 was when he created a lot of his work, uh, but it is, is never ending. Um, the reason why it's never ending is because it's uh, piles of paper or like um, stacks, of, stacks of posters, uh, which, which, which we have there, mm. um, where the museum goer um, is, in, is expected to take a piece and to take that piece home and, and have like a living piece of, of the weight uh, of his dead partner. 
um, all of all of the art is at a certain weight. Um, so every day the museum is supposed to weigh that stack of paper um, and to make sure that it's the weight of his uh, deceased partner who died of AIDS um, actually after his last breath. Um, when you pass away you actually lose um, a certain amount of weight because of air in your lungs or something. But uh, so, so it's a very professional um, piece and, and so you're able to take these posters away and uh, hang it on your refrigerator wall. Or, or, or on your wall, on you your need refrigerator, a pretty big refrigerator or, or, actually. or yeah. actually we paste it on the street. Um, when he did his exhibit in uh, Oakland in, from 1991 to 1994, he placed this very same image um, or images like that on several different um, billboards over in Berkeley. Um, and it was for the Berkeley Art Museum exhibit that he had there. And, and, and so I have in the exhibit uh, that poster along with the photograph of the actual piece in its intended form, which was uh, kind of like the billboard around the streets, or street art as it is. Great, I've actually got a couple of post uh, pictures, I've sort of taken at random of some of the shots, uh, some of your street art. Let me ask you though, how do, how do you actually, uh, before we go into that, how do you coordinate with street artists? How do you get their, do you need to get their permission to get the street art or, uh, and and you know and as basically somebody who's rather suburban, what is street art? Is it chalk art? Is it a lot of people regard it as vandalism? Is there, are there codes of ethics and things like that? Um, I don't know. Uh, there's there's several different views on that, and um, that's what makes it a, an extremely interesting art form. Is that it isn't completely filled with all of these rules like drawing or painting um, or sculpture itself. Like there's like a long history of uh, painting and drawing, and 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 if you don't draw in the certain way that you're taught in like art schools or or people say that is drawing, then then you're supposedly not a drawer. But like. It, you can draw in any way you want and put it on the street and it, it's street art and it doesn't say that like you can't have an exhibit or, or we're not going to buy your art or we're not going to look at your art because you're kind of forced to look at it. Um, museum galleries and goers only reach about 10% of the population of any city whereas street art actually reaches 100% uh, of, of, of its, of its uh, population in the city. And um, it, yeah, so like Shira has like a lot of different forms um, from just like placing a canvas painting upside next to a, a street pole um, to actually like gluing that that you know canvas to the street pole. Uh, it, it has just like tons of different variations and uh, it, it's not vandalism and it's not graffiti because what graffiti and vandalism is is a bunch of letters that um, convey one message and that's someone's name. And whereas street art um, conveys an idea, um, a message that is much larger than one word. So something like those iron pieces that we see around home, town, which are these giant letters where it's things like we rock hardest and stuff like that. That's not graffiti. It's because it, it's not his name. It's a message that yeah, goes yeah, out to other people. Yeah, that's an um, an artist uh, from Europe, I believe, um, from London, mm -hmm. and um, the, those those pieces they convey a message. They don't convey just um, one name. And with graffiti, it's always one name. Like the, the stuff that we see on our buses or etched on your office windows and stuff like that. Right. That is not a message that is like intended for to change. Um, a, a message that's made, supposed to make you think. Those those are just messages of someone's particular name, and that that is that is different um, from street art. Okay, let's take a look at some of the individual shot, uh, p images that you have in your exhibition. For example, this one up here that we have on the screen. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, yes, that is uh, Opus Gay. Um, it is a Portugal uh, activist group. Um, it, it actually uh, started in 1998 um, when the government was like trying to uh, um, ch change things and like it, it was it was about like giving more rights and more um, more things very much like ACT UP uh, in New York and it was really kind of created after the same model of ACT UP organization um, and in and fighting for queer rights in uh, or Portugal Spain and how about those luscious lips on the right hand side um, that's a pl piece actually uh, if if you could get the um, whole piece there's actually a word behind there oh. it says uh, Besno Negro uh, Beso Negro I believe it, it's actually a Mexican word that means um, black kiss or um, in slang terminology it means rim job okay and here we are with a uh, bareback stuck stuck all over beware of the dog I believe that is uh, tell us more about that well it, it's a street sign and okay. those are street stickers um, put up by a local San Francisco um, painter um, who has since like recently gone into making street art uh, 
I don't know if I directly influenced him, um, but I do believe that my presence um, did kind of uh, make him start thinking uh, about doing his paintings um, in a street art form. He is known as Pixel Stud. Um, he takes a Lego and puts um, uh, paints on the actual dots that are on a Lego and then covers a canvas um, with those dots uh, creating these different kind of um, pixelized or um, pointillist kind of paintings. So, um, so these are a pill bottle yeah. that um, is filled with pills which is probably um, intended to be HIV meds and it actually says uh, bareback on it. And bareback he actually just for those people in the audience who don't know uh, is uh, a method is a uh, a uh, a common term for gay sex that is unprotected, where a condom is not used, hence barebacking. Let's go back to the, the pictures. This one is a rather iconic uh, shot of two men kissing. It's, uh, uh, tell us more about that one. Um, that's Encore, and he's from Freiburg, Germany. Um, and, and that's the kiss. It's a, it's a stencil uh, made in 2010 um, that is like placed all over Germany on the streets. Uh, it, it's first made into like stickers and put up as stickers or as we pasted. And if you look in the very lowest part of the, you get half of the um, 5 by 7 photo, um, you see like a scooter's uh, uh, mirror there. And then um, we pasted on a construction site wall is actually um, that poster in Germany in its in original intended yeah. form. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, one of the nice things about this exhibit is for every port, for every piece of art that you have, you actually have a small photograph close to it showing it in its site, in situ, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, otherwise, it would be just an exhibit of a bunch of posters and stickers. This is an exhibit of a bunch of street art, um, and therefore you need to have like the image of it in its street form since the gallery is only so big and we can't have an exhibit like necessarily um, on the street unless we did a tour. It would be rather nice to actually have it, it in a real street location with it, it, it pavement is, it is, it, and all that. Yeah, so um, that it is like uh, more close to Pride um, and, the, and the week of Pride. It is actually going to be um, done in an advertisement form okay. um, where 15 different images are going to be put on posters and these posters are going to be uh, put up next to one another, um, creating the viewer to see um, half of the exhibit um, in on the street next to one another. Um, hopefully in making people want to go and actually see the exhibit in person. Great, so let's take a look at uh, this one, Homo Riot. What is um, he is He's an LA artist. Uh, he, he does a lot of stuff down there and he's very well known in LA. Um, he's actually going to be coming up here and um, taking the exhibit down to LA and, and showing it at his um, startup gallery. Uh, and, and, and this is um, Duo Kissing um, with Homo Riot text uh, is the name of the piece. Um, and and yeah, it, it, in the exhibit, there's a lot of um, images of, of just like uh, gay embracing one another, um, kisses, uh, a lot of kisses, uh, females kissing one another, guys kissing one another. There's just a lot of this like image of, of like love um, for for fellow fellow uh, human beings and whatnot. And and then I kind of I kind of think that like the strong message right there is that like we deserve rights too. And um, yeah. I suppose part of that message is that we also deserve to love each other as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. Now, how how do you actually, uh, are, are, th are these various artists friends of yours? Are they just acquaintances? How do you make contact with these people? With uh, these, uh, well, artists? well, these artists, uh, it, it took me about three years um, to yeah. actually uh, gain this many friends. Um, I, I've uh, been a, a, a street artist uh, for, for a number of years. Yeah. I've been doing stencils for 12 years now. I, um, I do have two art degrees. I went to art school and whatnot, and um, those, of course, were not for stenciling or, or street art, mm. as um, it's only recent that they actually teach it in art schools and universities. Uh, so it took me a while to like find these artists, and I, I wanted to know that I wasn't the only one. Um, and, and I, and I kind of knew that I wasn't the only one doing it, but I, I, I still, I, 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 like, I didn't know how many were doing it. And um, through the process of uh, different social, um, online social networking things, I was able to um, find uh, different artists um, that were doing, doing this stuff. Uh, one key, key thing I used uh, was Flickr. And um, the law enforcement uh, also uses Flickr. Um, they, they go through people's photo libraries and they look for images that are, um, have the same message in them. And, and so I basically did the same exact thing. I went on, on, on Flickr and I, like, I looked through different people's photo albums and I like, searched for queer images and um, queer street art and stuff. 
And I slowly started to um, find that the same person was posting the same images. And then I contacted that person asking if they were friends with this person, if they had the contact information for this person, or if they were that person. Um, and, and I sent them my purpose. And along with that, I sent them the images of my queer street art and that like I, I was this artist. And, um, and, and, and slowly I, I started to gain friends. And um, I, I, I just I have this now kind of... Um, network of people that are doing art just like me. Um, whereas in San Francisco, there's a very small handful of people that are. And in the Midwest, where I'm from, like, I, I, there's, there's like no one. Like, it, it, it really, um, you, you deal with a lot of bullying. A lot of homophobia exists in the world of graffiti and street art. And they just harass you. They uh, destroy your artwork. They, uh, they do whatever they can um, to the point of actually beating you up on the street late at night. And uh, if you get beat up, if you get robbed, if you get your hand broken, there's nothing you can do. Uh, everyone's like, oh, go to the cops. Um, but you go to the cops and you tell the cops that I was out doing um, my art late at night yeah. and I was beat up by another group of people. All of a sudden it becomes that you are the criminal and it isn't a homophobic act of you being beat up where in fact it very much is. A very similar thing will take place if you are in a bar fight and you are drunk and the person who is beating you up for being gay um, is drunk as well. You both are going to get uh, disorderly, drunken disorderly conduct. Um, it is not going to even necessarily be looked at as a homophobic act. I see. Well, how do you find San Francisco then as an environment for doing street art? Is it tolerant for you? Is it, well, uh, I mean, you're wearing a mask. Everybody, <laughs> yeah. everybody would like San Francisco to be this safe, um, beautiful, sunny, hippie-filled city, um, when in, when in fact it's, like it's, it's not so mm. much. Um, mm. And, and it, it's really kind of, everybody's like kind of amazed uh, that like there is homophobia in San Francisco, um, but a lot of people stay in their own little social bubbles. Um, the graffiti and street art world in San Francisco is more open-minded and more tolerant than a lot of cities. Um, it, it does have a lot of really great people um, really uh, understanding my art and understanding my purpose of my art and also like seeing that the other people I have that are historic like, meant something in the world of street art. But at the same time, there are like tons and tons of books being written right now and, and queer artists are not talked about in any of these books. Um, there are tons and tons of galleries that show street art but will not show queer street artists and there are places in the city that these same exact things are happening as well as like around the world. So uh, are you defining queer street art as art that is done by queer people or are you defining street or is it art that shows queer activities or is it both? Well, um, because my exhibit isn't the history of queer street art, mm. it is only a, a history, history of, of queer, queer street art. Okay. Um, I, my, my exhibit specifically uh, in, has, has to be an image that is talking about a queer iconography or a queer message. Um, so it has to be an artist uh, creating art about queers. My exhibit actually has a straight people in, in it. Um, there's a uh, Hugh Lehman, um, and, and, and he creates uh, different images. Um, and one of the images he created was a, 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 an image of Harvey Milk, and um, he's a great queer icon. And, and, and so he's, he's in the exhibit. Uh, there are other people that are in the exhibit as well that like, make messages that like, they're against homophobia, um, and, and they're straight artists. So, so it's just about being a queer message or queer imagery. Let's now turn to your work. I've actually uh, spent some time uh, over the last few days running around San Francisco with a camera, uh, snapping street art and some of your work, it, mostly your work actually, because I love your stuff. I find it's, uh, it has a degree of charm to actually walk on the streets of San Francisco and feel like you're actually on a koi pond. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, no, by all means, it's, it's you know, you, you have well, a Well, it is, it is important to note mm. that like, I am not the only one doing stencils in the San Francisco, and um, I I I know that like a lot of people sometimes think that just because it's a stencil and maybe because it's on the sidewalk that it's mine. But in in fact, there's like only um, a few one one project in particular that um, my stencils are directly put onto a surface. Um, my other projects are wheat pasting, um, where I take a poster and uh, wheat paste, and I actually kind of glue it temporarily to a wall. If it rains, um, that actual poster will come off. Um, if it is hosed down, that poster will come off, not necessarily damaging the surface at all. So again, it's not actually a, a graffiti process. It is just making it, art. It, yeah, it is a printmaking process. It's, it's, a it's print. using um, a, a way of making prints um, in stenciling. Uh, uh, same process is 
used kind of in um, lino cutting, um, silk screening, etching, um, where, where you make, make a, an original kind of template and then you put ink or a, a different color paint You've through that. You've got stencils too. with you. Let's bring oh, out I did and, have some. And, uh, and let's take a look. So here, here is the finished product actually on a sidewalk in San Francisco. So um, here, here we have like, uh, I actually brought in some stencils. Exactly. So if you look at this stencil, um, the orange area in it is actually uh, this, this pattern um, placed onto to the stencil to create the orange area. Okay. Um, um, and, then, and then the original uh, template for the actual body of the fish is this. Um, actually, in this, this stencil that we have here, there's, there's four different layers. Um, there's a layer for the black outline that goes around the fish. Um, there's a, a layer for the white um, that goes around the fish. And then there's like the spots, um, of course, in two different colors. So there, there is a, there's a process of, of making layering and stuff. Okay, let's take a look at some more of your pictures. Here's some koi fish. Uh, can you identify where they are? Um, yes, it's actually at a, um, a mural spot in the city that was a commissioned mural. Um, at Hayton Laguna uh, is a great wall of local artists, but unfortunately um, members from the community have been attacking this wall. Um, members from the graffiti world, um, members from the community that maybe think that artists that are street artists should not be making money at their art. Um, in fact, uh, the gray area that is around those koi fishes um, we'll is, is actually yeah. someone going around and um, being a vigilante against street art. But look at how untastefully he covered up or she covered up the koi fish. Um, so I had to go back and actually put the koi fish in the same exact spot. Um, the koi fish in the very first picture um, that we saw there, there was like this blue splatter of, of, of paint kind of on the sidewalk itself, like paint had spilled on the sidewalk. Um, and the koi fish are actually on top of that blue splatter, kind of fixing the problem of, of uh, graffiti or, 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 or paint splatter or urban blight in particular. Um, and in, in its in its intent, so it's it's not necessarily um, intended to. Uh, that's that's this to, picture right here. Yeah, well, there, there's that, and then they go back one more. Okay, this one. No, no, no that right one. there. There you go. Okay. So, so that's like a clean surface. Oh, we were almost out of time. I'm so sorry. Okay, that's the end of the show. Thank you very much for being on the show. Really, really, really appreciate okay, it. Cool. We didn't get a chance to uh, talk about a lot of things. Oh, well, I knew that we weren't going to. No.